Thank you, everyone. Um, Sandringham Primary School, this was our first VSBA project, and I guess like anyone who's had anything to do with the VSBA, it's a big learning curve, good and bad. The school were amazing, and I, I'm not sure if you remember, but in January 19, in 2020, uh, some boys got into the school and just about destroyed it. it pretty much more than 50% of the school burnt down, um, and so the project was to rebuild what was lost in the fire. And it was extremely traumatic, obviously, for a school to lose its library and lots of its kind of identity, I suppose, went with, went with it. So it was a pretty tough gig for a first um, uh, project with VSBA. Oh, sorry, wrong way. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with the VSBA, you start with what's called an AMP1, which is essentially a master plan, which sort of sets the context for the project that you that, that is funded. And you get a letter from the minister saying, this is what you'll spend it on. And in this case, we're very um, attentive to kind of understanding what the school was before the fire, because we didn't know that. We, it was gone. So we basically had to reconstruct for ourselves what, what were the attributes of the school before it, it was lost. And the strange thing when you saw from that photo was that it was a, a sprawling, single-storey, massive tile roof kind of building, um, and not very good. So our, the, the big task was, well, what is the opportunity once that much is lost? And the little squiggly line with the question mark is the bit that was essentially left that could be retained, probably. So it's a very small site. It's designed for 600 kids. There's 500 pupils there at the moment and on, a, on less than 1.5 hectares. So the big thing they were on about was preserving as much and to optimise as much of the landscape as possible. So that effectively meant um, building two-storey and overcoming that problem of the sprawling single-storey building. So you can see the extent of loss, uh, a lot of uh, smoke and water damage in parts of the original building, that yellow bit at the bottom, and then the orange bits that were completely destroyed, and then some of the play areas as well. So part of this um, preliminary idea making with the school was very much about where the, where the rebuild would occur, which is kind of in the, what we call the academic core, is leaving as much open space as possible. And then going through a series of design principles that sort of set the standard. So the big thing there we felt was to create fingers of building, like a village of buildings rather than a singular building, and to optimise open space and to have, they already had some really nice courtyards they really liked, so that idea of linking outdoor learning spaces with little courtyards and some sort of better sense of arrival. When you, when you went to the school, it was a kind of, a, a, it didn't really engage with the perimeter or have a sense of entry. So that's what led to the master plan project here, which has got sort of what we call the long axis and the community axis, and sort of the welcome mat, basically, the idea that you enter the school into a generous courtyard and um, lots of studies about massing of the building and how to locate it on the site. Um, planning wise, uh, they're very strict, you know, down to the square meter on the methodology for allocating space. So um, what's really quite nice about this is that the library, the green bit, was um, shooed back into the kind of remnant part of the original um, fire damage brick wall and then the, intent, the learning intensive spaces of the dark blue, which is art room and food tech and that sort of thing, and then pairs of um, shared learning spaces with their connected outdoor, with their connected spaces as well. Same upstairs. So then the context of the building, you can see there the sort of foreground footprint and some really beautiful trees, lovely landscape. So it's sort of stitching itself back in. Very um, warm, inviting kind of. Um, arrival sense to the building. You can see drawn into, into the various learning classrooms. They've all either got external balcony spaces or um, outdoor terraces or courtyards. And knowing with primary schools, the point of arrival is that people can go straight to their classroom. They don't need to go into you know, a complicated sort of circulation system. So it means that little family groups, pick up, drop off, all those sort of things happens in a really much more kind of conducive environment than, than a, just a big school. And, you know, so when you go there, there's this sort of terrific sense of being drawn into the school and people going about, you know, where they need to go. Um, and the idea of big sliding doors opening to the exterior is just so different to what they had before, which is a completely internalised building. 
remnant walls. We weren't really sure whether we could keep these, but in the end we were able to, and that got transformed into the library with some really beautiful little courtyards, kind of keeping the main rhythm of the building and then putting us, this is the south facade, so we are able to put a big pop-up roof. The original foundation section of the building, which was you know, com almost completely destroyed by fire, which we managed to return as the staff uh, room, sort of in the heart of the school. And then the courtyards. You can see on, on one side there the kind of tiled roof section of the older part of the building and then the library with the window seat around on the left. The Arning Circle kind of connected. The school had a very good engagement with the Brunel people. Um, we just shoehorned on the end of that by sort of recycling things essentially, sort of digging stuff up and putting it back in. Um, library space, you can see a meeting room there breaking into a little courtyard and that um, other, other piece of the building is the staff room I just showed before. So there's this kind of really beautiful sense of connected classrooms and remnant pieces of the fire damaged building um, that kind of work together. Again, you can see the kind of distressed state of the building and the meeting room and courtyard kind of transformed. Library in a, in a it's still called the library, which is fantastic. In, in primary schools, they still look and feel like a library. They've got lots of books, you know, nooks and seating spaces, and um, it's like a really beautiful um, thing to see the kids enjoying you know, the traditions of book learning. Um, the classrooms or the, the shared learning spaces you can see here with um, the sort of run to the perimeter with these kind of more centralised, you know, big volumes of space, lots of nooks and crannies, window seats, that sort of thing. There's an enormous kind of variety of spatial types within the building so that everyone kind of has a sense of home base. Um, on the right is the staff room, again with its um, cathedral ceiling and left space is more breakout um, areas. The school, you know, embraced this enormously. Obviously the rebuild was just such a, an incredible thing for them and to get um, a, effectively a new school out of it, they were just over the moon. Um, and I have to say, dealing with uh, the key staff people and the principal was just a delight. They were great fun to work with, really appreciative, understood what we did as architects. And, um, and the kids, you know, they got um, lots of engagement. It's sort of what's nice about the VSBA projects, I think, once you get through the bureaucratic parts of things, is the actual school communities themselves. They're just great fun to work with. And the kids got involved in the kind of opening ceremony, sort of, I guess this is just part of the kind of healing process that goes on when kids get, uh, when their school gets burnt down is for the way that they're re-engaged with the school is um, quite moving actually. 